Good morning, mathematicians. Um, welcome back with us uh, at APS, at home with APS this morning. Um, we're going to do SPLAT again, and if you were here earlier in the week with us, this was an activity that we did. What is going to happen is that you are going to see a group of dots on the screen, and I want you to think about how many dots are there and see if you can remember what the groupings are that are there, and then we'll talk about how many dots you see, and then we're gonna cover some up and try to figure out what has been covered up. All right, let's get going. All right, if you wanna bring your eyes up here, because I'm gonna show you here in a minute. What do you see? How many blue shapes? I kind of see a four and maybe another four, or a four and two and two and one more. So I'm gonna say I think that there are nine. Let's see what it says. Nine dots, did you see nine dots also? Can you see the four that I'm talking about? And then maybe a two, a two, and a one? All right, some of them are going to get covered up. So let's see if we can figure out what gets covered up. Ooh, well, I had thought about this four and a two, so I think two dots are covered up from what I remember of the picture but I also could count what is here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's see. How many shapes do you think are under there? We're thinking two, right? We could know it by thinking about the pattern or by doing some counting and then counting on from that to see if we could figure it out. We were right, there were two under there. All right, let's try another one. You ready? How many blue dots do you see? Can you see any groups? We're gonna cover some up. Oh, first we're gonna see how many there are, six. So maybe a four and a two, or two, two, and two to make the six. All right, now let's cover some up. Ooh, well, I see three. And I know that three and three makes six because that's a double. So that's how I'm thinking. I think there are three. What do you think? Three? We also could check it by going one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So there would have to be four, five, six, three of them under there. Let's see what we find out. Ah, there were three. We were right. Let's try another one. Are you ready? Eyes up here. Ooh, there's a lot of dots there. What do you guys see? Hmm. It's popping out for me in the middle is kind of a six, a three and a three. And then maybe two over here and two over there. So another four. And six and four makes 10. How else could we see those dots? Maybe you'd see a four here and a four here and two more, or we could just count them to see what's there, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's see if we're right. Ten dots, were you right? I think you were. Let's cover some of them. Ooh, well, let's see. I have a lot of dots out, so we have a three and a three out. That's six, seven, eight. 9, 10, that could be a way we could figure it out. What do you think? How many do you think are under there? I'll give you a minute to figure it out. Let's check it and see. Were you right? Did you say two? All right, good job. Here's our last one, I think, of the smaller numbers. Let's see what we can see. Ooh, a three and a two. That reminds me of the five frames that we talked about yesterday. Three and two makes five. Or we could see a four and a one, depending on how you looked at it, right? Let's cover some up. Well, let's find out if we're right. Five, and then let's cover some up. Ooh, well, there's four left out. And what do we remember about what makes five? Four and what makes five? Four and one, that's right. So let's check it and see if we were right. We were right, one under there, huh? Okay, now 
we're going to look at a much bigger group of dots for a couple of these slides. Well, that is a lot of dots. It's going to be kind of hard for us to see groupings in that many dots. So we might actually just have, we could see a three here maybe, and another three is six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. That's a lot of dots. Let's see if that's right. 19 dots. It sure would be easier to see those if they were arranged in a 10 frame or a couple of 10 frames, right? All right, they're going to cover some up. Hmm, that's a good portion of them, so it's going to be a pretty big number. How could we figure out what they covered up? What do you think? How many shapes are under that splat? How are we going to know? Hmm, I'll give you a minute to think about that. How many are on the outside? I see a three, and another three, and another three. That would be nine, 10, 11. I think there's 11 on the outside. Is that what you got? So if we have 11 that we can see, and we know that there's 19 altogether, we could count up like we did with some of our bigger ones, right? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So maybe it's eight. But I also wonder if there's another way. Maybe we could count backwards. So if we have 19, we know, and we take the 19 away, and the 18 away, and the 17 away, and the 16, and the 15, and the 14, and the 13, and the 12, and the 11, and the 10, and the 9, what should we get under there? Let's see. Three and another three is six, seven, eight. So when we counted backwards, that we did get that we, there would be eight under there. And then I also tracked on my fingers and found eight. So there were two ways. With these bigger ones, we kind of have to do some counting on or counting back to figure them out. All right, let's try another one. That doesn't have quite as many dots. What do you see there? Maybe we can see some groups. How many dots do you think there are? I think there's three and another row of three. So that's six. I see a six there. And maybe a four up here. That's 10. Six and four makes 10. 11, 12. Maybe that's what it is. Did you think 12? What did you think? Let's check it and see what it is. 12 dots. We covered some up. Hmm. And we can see that we have four and another four and one more. So four and four is eight and one more is nine. So 12, take away nine, or we could start with the nine and see how many we would need to get to 12, right? Nine, 10, 11, 12. I'm thinking three. Ah, did you think three? You did, you were right. Let's try another one. Ooh, that one's got a few more. Anybody see any patterns? I'll give you a minute or two to think about how many dots are there. What do you see? I could see a six up here at the top. There's a row of three and a row of three and a four over here on the right side and six and four makes 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, maybe it's 15. We could just count them all, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. The only problem with that is you have to kind of remember and make sure you got them all, right? Let's check and see if it's 15. It is 15. All right, wonder what they're gonna cover up. Ooh, they covered up a lot of them. So there's only a few out. This one, it might be better for me to count backwards to figure out because I don't have to make as many counts. So 15, if I took the 15 away up here at the top, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. Maybe there's nine under there. How many dots are on the outside? 
two down at the bottom, two on the right side, one at the top, so that makes five, and one over here on the left is six. Another way to think about that would be 10 and six would be 16, and we know there's 15, so it should be nine under there, one less. Let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There were nine under the splat. All right, let's try one more. Are you ready? Eyes on the screen. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe that was our last one. Thought we had one more. We'll end it up with that. What we're gonna do real quick before Ms. Karnas um, comes out and does some problem solving with you is we're just gonna go ahead and review our 10 frames from yesterday. Do you remember the 10 frame? It's called a 10 frame because it has 10 boxes. One, two, three, four, five on the top. One, two, three, four, five on the bottom. And five and five makes 10. I'm gonna start with the 10 frame that has a full row. Do you remember what that means? That means that it is five if one of the rows is full. So we have five on our top row and five on our bottom row. How many does that make? Five altogether. What if I add one more? Five and one more. We were gonna have six, right? It's sort of like the cubes that we worked on earlier this week when we just had one more making it bigger. How much do you think is on this card then? That's right, it's five and two, so it would be seven. It's one more than our six. We got five and three. One more than seven is eight. Five and four, one more than eight is nine. And our last card would be five and five, and we already talked about that. So before we go off and do something different, I just want you to think about these patterns that come out of those frame cards. What are you noticing? We're always starting with a five, a row of five, and we're always adding one more here, and that makes our answer go up by one more. So we can use that to help us remember what is on the 10 frames when we're working with them. And we'll keep looking at them a little bit more each day until we know them really well. All right, Ms. Karnas is gonna come out here and do some work with y'all now. Good morning, kiddos. Glad to be with you again today. This morning, we're going to do another little investigation with money, and we are going to try to use some technology. Okay. So, you bring your eyes to the screen. So, when we think about money, right, um, let's just do a little review of what we know about money. So here's a dollar, and a dollar is worth 100 cents, right? A dollar is made up of 100 cents. Um, and so we have some visuals just to remind us of what coins are worth, because some of us have probably worked with coins quite a bit, and some of us maybe not so much. So this will help us today. So a dollar is worth 100 cents, and that 100 cents could be made up of all sorts of different coin types. So let's kind of review the coin types we'll be working with today. So here's our dollar. Today we're gonna to be working also with a quarter. A quarter is worth 25 cents. We're going to be working with dimes. You know how much dimes are worth? That's right, dimes are worth 10 cents. Then we have nickels. A nickel is worth half as much of a, as a dime. Hmm, how much is that? That's right, five cents. And then we have our good old friend, the penny, and I bet you everyone has worked with pennies. How much are those worth? Just one cent each. Okay, so guys, have you ever saved coins in a jar? 
save up for something you really want to buy, a treat or a toy. So this is a coin jar that belongs to my friend Jennifer. And we're going to talk about the coins that come out of Jennifer's jar today. All right, so Jennifer reached into her jar, and these are the coins that she pulled out. Two pennies, a quarter, another penny, and a nickel. How much is that? How many cents would that be? How could we figure it out? How could we work it? I wonder where we should start. We could start anywhere, right? We could just start counting with the pennies. One, two and then add on, but what might, be, what might be the easiest place to start? We might start thinking about the quarter. Why is that a good idea, maybe, for us? Because it's the largest amount it's worth the most. So if we think about starting with our quarter, then we might go ahead and get, so we have 25. What could I count next? I see a nickel. How much is that worth again? The nickel is worth five cents. So 25 and five gives us 30. And then we have 31, 32, 33. So Jennifer pulled out 33 cents as a quarter, a nickel, and three dimes. Let's think about some other coin combinations that would equal 33 cents. So this time we're going to be looking at the screen and we're going to pull some of those coins over right on the screen. Ms. Carnes is going to work that from her computer, okay? So what are some other combinations we could use to make 33 cents? Um, could we start with, a, could we use pennies? Sure. We could pull over pennies to make 33 cents. Hmm. Kiddos. That's gonna take a long time. How many pennies will we have to pull over? 33, that's a lot of pennies. So I'm wondering if again, we could start with a, a coin that's worth a bit more. Could we, where could we start? You know what's one that I always like to start with is a good idea, 10. 10 is a great number to start with. So let's pull over some dimes because dimes are worth 10 cents and see how we can get 33. So here we're gonna pull over one dime over on the left of our screen, right? So we have 10, 20, 30. How much more do we need for 33? That's right, just three cents. So we can go ahead and pull over our three pennies. And there's another way to have 33 cents. Let's go ahead and record this. So looking at our chart now, record this as a number sentence for ourselves. So we said 10 cents plus 10 cents plus 10 cents plus three cents equals 35 cents for us, doesn't it? Is there another way that we could make our 33 cents? Hmm, I'm wondering if we could use fives because you know what? When we look at our model on our screen, we can see that our nickel is half as much as our dime. Five is half as much as 10. So I think we could build this with nickels as well. Let's pull some over. So we'll be counting by fives this time, right? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then how much more do we need, kiddos? Again, we need our three cents more, so let's pull those down. Okay. So another way to make 33 cents. And you know, I could build that as a number sentence, and I could think about the number sentence that we've already written too, because each dime, or 10 cents, right, 
has two nickels or five cents inside. So we could think about that. Five cents plus five cents plus five cents, plus five cents. So far that's 20 cents, right? Four fives is the same as two tens. Plus five cents, plus five cents, plus three cents is another way to build 33 cents. So now I'm wondering, there's a lot of ways, right? Could we use a combination of those coins? Sure we could, absolutely. So let's think about that. What if I used uh, 10 cents, a dime, another 10 cents. Now I'm at 20 cents. Hmm, I think I'll use some nickels now. So 10, 20, 25, 30, we're already at 30 and we need just three more cents, right? So here is another way, another coin combination we could use to get 33 cents. Let's go ahead and write that as a number sentence. 10 cents plus 10 cents plus five cents plus five cents plus three cents. And all of these guys equal 30, 33 cents. All right, excellent. So now here's what's going on next with Jennifer. So we can see back on our screen, here is Jennifer's 33 cents, but she wants to buy a pack of gum and the pack of gum costs 50 cents. So I'm wondering how much more she needs to make 50 cents, and also what coins she might use to get that. So let's just think about that for a moment. While you think, I'm going to move to a new page so we have plenty of room. Okay. So here, ours are 33 cents. And you know what, I like to start by adding always a 10. So let's go ahead and add on a dime. So 33 plus another dime gets us 43, right? And um, then can we add another dime? 33, 43. <gasps> That's a little bit too much, isn't it? 53, all right. Let's go ahead and swap that out. What could we use instead, guys? What could we use? So, so far we have 43 cents and we need 50. Could we add a nickel or five cents? We could. So now we have 25, 30, 33, 43, 43 plus five more is 48. How many more cents do we need to get to 50? Just the two more. Let's go ahead and record that on a number line. Let's see. Well, we'll, record, we'll have to record a little small. So here we go. So we're gonna use an empty number line. How much do we start with again? Oh yeah, 33, right, 33 cents. And then we made a big jump of 10, and that got us to 43 cents. And then we made a jump of five with our nickel, that got us to 48 cents. And then we had to jump on just two more cents or our pennies to get to 50. All right, nice job, guys. Hmm, so I think I'm going to skip ahead now to thinking about what if you wanted to buy something? So what if you wanted to buy, looking at our screen, three fancy pencils for 99 cents? 
What coins could you use to do that? Let's take a look. Hmm. We could start with 10, right? Could we start with something bigger though? I think we could. Let's go ahead and pull over a quarter. So we have 25 cents so far. What could we add next? We can make jumps of 10. What if we just added another quarter? Now how much would we have? 25 plus 25, that's a double. So what do we have so far? 50 cents, right? And we need 99 cents. Could we add another quarter? Sure we could. So that would mean we'd have 50 cents plus 25 cents. What would that give us? Let's pull over another. 75 cents. Oh, we're getting close, guys. I think it might be time to add on our tens, you think? Let's pull over some tens. So 75 plus 10 is 85. And another 10 is 95. How much more do we need? We have 95 and we need 99. That's right, guys, four more cents. Let's pull those down. So there is another coin combination to make 99 cents. So we ended up with 75 cents plus two tens. That's 20 cents, isn't it? And then four more cents. And that gave us 99 cents. So we're gonna have to wrap this up today, guys. But I have just one question for you. Did anybody think about our original amount of 33 cents when you were thinking about spending 99? We might have built it like this, right? 33 plus another 33 cents. Doubling that gives us 66 cents. And if we add one more 33, guess what we have? Another way to make 99 cents. Next time you get out your penny jar or your coin jar, think about what coins you might use to buy a treat at the gas station or the dollar store and think about how you could use the least amount of coins. What combinations could you use? We're gonna bring Mrs. Obenchain back up to read a story. All right, we are going to read a story today called The King's Commissioner. Okay, whoops, my chair is rolling away from me. All right, this book is called The King's Commissioner. The story was written by Eileen Friedman and the pictures were illustrated by Susan Guevara and it is published by Scholastic. Let's look at that real quick. What do you notice about the king's face? How does he look like he's feeling? Hmm. I wonder. And it's also called the king's commissioners. I wonder what commissioners are. Maybe if we read the story, we can figure out what commissioners are. So let's, let's see what happens here. To the first page. All right. The king was confused. Well, I guess that answers our first question about what his expression on his face was, was about. Let's see if we can figure out what a commissioner is. Every time a problem occurred in his kingdom, the king had appointed a royal commissioner to take care of it. There was a commissioner for flat tires, one for chicken pox, another for foul balls, there was even a commissioner for things that go bump in the night. The last commissioner had been appointed when the princess was having very scary nightmares. So it sounds like a commissioner is somebody who helps the king solve problems. Now there were so many royal commissioners, the king had lost track of who was taking care of what. He didn't even know how many commissioners he had all together. I've got to get organized, he thought. Well, he thought again, at least I have to count them. 
The king called in his most important helpers, the first royal advisor and the second royal advisor. We must count all the royal commissioners, the king said. I want you to issue an official proclamation. Tell the commissioners to line up outside of the throne room tomorrow at three o'clock and be sure to use all the trumpets that we've got. How do you plan to count them, your majesty? Asked the first royal advisor. Simple, offered the king. I'll count them one by one as they come in the door. And just to be sure we get the right number, you and the second royal advisor will count them too. The king's advisors did as they were told. The next day at three o'clock, a crowd of royal commissioners waited patiently outside the throne room door. Okay, it's time, said the king to the first and second advisors. I'll sit here on my throne. One of you stand on the right side of the door and the other stand on the left side of the door. Each of us will count. The royal advisor took, advisors took their places. The king motioned to the imperial doorman, let the royal commissioners in, he ordered, one by one. First came the commissioner for spilt milk. He had been very busy when the princess was a baby. The commissioner for lost homework followed. She was very busy now. The commissioner for mismatched socks went next. Then the commissioner for wrong turns. As the royal commissioners filed into the throne room, the king counted them one by one in his head. One, two, three, four. The royal advisors busily made tallies on their large notepads. Just as the king got to 18, the princess came running through the royal back door to the throne room. She climbed up onto her father's knee and kissed him on the cheek. As always, the king was delighted to see his daughter. Hello, my princess, he said, hugging her tight. After we finish counting the royal commissioners, you'll tell me about your day at school. But when the king turned back to the line of commissioners filing into the throne room, he realized that he had lost count. No matter, he thought. My royal advisors are counting them as well. When the commissioners, the last commissioner had filed into the room, the commissioner for late arrivals, the king turned to his first royal advisor. How many commissioners do we have all together, he asked. Well, your highness, said the first royal advisor, I made a tally mark for each commissioner who came in, and then I circled the marks in twos. He showed the king his notepad. There are 23 twos and one more. That doesn't tell me anything said the king. I want to know how many commissioners we have all together. But your excellency, let me explain. You see, the princess jumped off her father's knee and chimed in. Yes, daddy, she said, he's right. But the king ignored them both and motioned for the second royal advisor. How many commissioners did you count all together? The king asked him. So you can see tally marks are lines. And that's how he was keeping track. And he circled it in groups of two. First came, can, can the royal organizer put all the commissioners in rows? Wait a minute, did I miss a page? I did. Okay, so this is the second royal advisor. Well, your majesty, the second royal advisor said, a little nervously, I also made a tally mark for each commissioner, but I put the mark in groups of five. He showed his tally marks to the king. I got nine fives and two more than that. Stop, cried the king. That doesn't tell me anything either. What I want to know is how many commissioners there are all together. But sir, I can, tried the second royal advisor. Let me, daddy, let me, pleaded the princess. The king looked down at his eager daughter and sighed. All right, my dear, you may as well try. First, can the royal organizer put the commissioners in rows, asked the princess. Tell him to put 10 commissioners in each row, then I can count them. The king sighed again. I don't know how that will help, but okay. 
Following the king's order, the royal organizer arranged the commissioners in rows of 10. There were four rows and seven commissioners left over. The princess stood in front of the first row of commissioners, 10, she said, then she walked to the second row, 20, she said, next. Walking along the rows, she continued to count 30, 40, plus seven more makes 47. The princess looked up at the king. There are 47 commissioners all together. The king was amazed and proud. What a thinker, he exclaimed. The royal advisor felt a bit annoyed. That's the same number I got, he said testily. 23 twos makes 46, plus one more makes 47. I got 47 too, added the second royal advisor. Nine fives makes 45, plus two. Two more make 47. The king looked confused. They're right, daddy, said the princess. You can count in lots of ways. She pointed to the first royal advisor's tally marks and counted two, four, six, eight, and so on until she got to 46. Then she added one more to make 47 tally marks and counted. And then she counted five, 10, 15, 20, and so on to 45. Adding two more, she got to 47 again. So here's the tally marks by twos and here's the tally marks by fives. All well and good, said the king. We have 47 royal commissioners all together. Then he thought for a few minutes. That's not so many, he said. We can still have a few more. Then I think we should have a commissioner to keep count of the royal commissioners, suggested the first royal advisor. Good idea, agreed the king. He looked down at the princess. If you weren't so busy with school, I'd give you the job. Maybe when I grow up, she said. For now, I think I'd rather be a princess. So let's look at that really quickly and double check to see if they were on track. Make sure we get the same thing they did. So the princess counted in rows of 10, 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus seven, 10, 20, 30, 40, and seven is 47. The first advisor counted by twos, two, let's see, and I think instead of making a number sentence on this one, because it's gonna be a lot of twos, he said 23, right? I think I'm gonna just write the count, what we would say, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 10 twos. 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. Count with me. 34. 36, 38, 40, this was 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 twos, 42, 44, 46, 46, so that's 23, and then one more was 47. So that would be right, 23 twos would be, and you know, Next year, if you're a second grader this year, you'll, you'll learn about multiplication. We could write that as 23 times 2 equals 46 to keep track of all of our 2s in there. And then the other was 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. There were nine fives. he said. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 45, and two more was also 47. So they got 47 counting by twos, by fives, and by tens, and they just had to kind of add on the extra. It kind of is similar to how Miss Carnes was, was adding with money, isn't it? 
So for you to think about at home, can you think of any new commissioners that the king might need? What would you name them? And how many would there be? And then what would his new total be? If he has 47 now, what other commissioners do you think he would need? And then how many would he have altogether? That's your challenge question to think about at home after this today. All right, we're gonna move on to a game that Ms. Carnes has ready for us. All right, so we're gonna um, chat just for a moment about some tricky numbers. You know, we like to give you practice with tricky numbers. Um, and our game will give us that practice also. So, oh, just need that chart right here. Okay. So, kiddos, the tricky numbers, the tricky count we're going to work on today is called crossing the decade. Do you know what that means? It means, so if we think about our numbers as belonging in families, right? When you cross the decade, it means you switch over into a new family. So when you think, of, look at our hundreds chart here, our first row is all the ones family, right? Right up to nine. And we know because each of these numbers just has one digit. But after nine, we start to switch into the next family. And we're at 10. The same thing happens with every family of numbers. So if we were here in our second row on the hundreds chart, we start at 11 and we're in the teens family all the way across until we get to 19. And then sometimes it's tricky to remember what number comes next because we're changing. So what comes after 19? It's 20. We can see all of these changes here in our last two columns of our hundreds chart. 9, 10, 19, 20, 29, 30, 39, 40, and some are harder to remember than others. So we're gonna play a game called Crossing the Decade Concentration. And this is a game that you could play by yourself or you could play with a friend if you have a friend with you. So Mrs. Obenchain's gonna play with us today and that way somebody gets to win. We like that, right? So um, parents and helpers at home, the instructions for this game are available online with our resources as well as the cards that you could print out and use, but you could make them too because that's what we did here. So on the left side of our chart here, we have all the numbers that come right before you cross into a new family. And there's a pattern with them, right? They all end with what number? Nine, you've got it. So I've drawn 59. Since I drew 59, I need to try to find what comes next. So what comes after 59? That's right, 60. So now I'm gonna to move to the right side of our chart and flip another card and see if it's a 60, fingers crossed. If it is, I get to keep both cards. If it's not, I turn them back over and I have to try to remember where things are. Let's try here. Oh, I needed a 60, but I got 100. So I'm gonna turn the cards back over so we can't see them. Try to remember where they are, guys. And it's Mrs. Obenchain's turn to give it a try. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna try down here. Oh, I think I got lucky on that one. 99. And if we look at our hundreds chart or a two hundreds chart, 99 and then 100. Because I'm, I'm done with all the, the family that starts with nine and I'm going into the next family. But, uh-oh. Do I remember which one she, what, she pulled over? Did I get it? I did, so I get to keep these cards. 99, 100, okay, let's see. Hmm, so I think my strategy is going to be, I'm gonna to try to draw the same card I started with last time and try to figure out where things are. I think this is the one, 59, let's see, was it? Yes, so here's 59. So if I turn over 59, what number will come next when I cross the decade or cross from the 50s family? That 
That's right, 60. Mm, I'm gonna check up here. That was super lucky. I didn't know it was there. Okay, so 59, 60. We can always check with our hundreds chart as well. 59, 60, so I get to keep this pair. Ooh, I got 19. And I always think, I know all the teen numbers start with a one, so the next family is gonna start with a two because that's the pattern that goes in our number system. So if the next number is gonna start with a two, then I know it's gonna be 20 that I'm looking for. That's a good way to remember, isn't it? So I'm gonna start, oh wow. I just did a check right there. Look at that. I swear I didn't peek when she put them up. I swear. <laughs> okay, let's see. So I'll have to start brand new. I haven't turned over any other cards on this side yet. Oh, let's try this one. Ooh, what number is this, kiddos? It has a seven and a nine. It's 79, right? Okay, so 79 here. So what number am I looking for? I have 79. That's right, 80. We can use Mrs. Obenshane's tip to help us. Since this starts with a seven and it's 79, when we cross into the next family, we'll be looking for a number that starts with eight, 80. Hmm. Oh, what number did I get? 50. So no match there. I'm gonna turn them back over and it's Mrs. Obenchain's turn. I might as well just try to finish this row here. So 29, all the 20s start with a two. So then I must be looking for a number that starts with a three because that's the next number after two. So I'm looking for 30. I was pretty lucky just staying in the same row. So maybe I should try that again. <gasps> so oh, close. I was close, but not quite. Okay, well, hmm, I think I'll just go brand new. So I'm gonna start up here at the top at the very first card. <gasps> what did I get, guys? This number has a four and a nine. So it's 49. What comes after the 40s family? It's going to start with a five. And I know I turned it over before, but I don't remember where it is. Hmm, it might have been down here. Oh, nope, I didn't remember. What number did I get? 80. Oh, that could help if Mrs. Obenchain has a good memory. Not sure I remember where that 50 was. So maybe I'll just stick with trying to work off of this one because I don't think I remember. So 29. And I tried this one and she tried that one. So I know those aren't the 30 that I'm looking for. So maybe I'll try this one. Oh, darn. <laughs> I think I've just given it away for Miss Carnes, haven't I? I found the one she was looking for. Okay, here we go. So then I'm going back to the tippy top first one. It was a 49, right? And then Mrs. Obenchain had just turned over. Oh, I didn't remember. I still picked the wrong one. I was looking for that 50, wasn't I? But I got an 80. Oh, oh. that might work in my favor then. I should be able to remember this one, you shouldn't I? You get another I? try. 49. Oh, that's and where it was. 50. So she keeps those cards. I got lucky that time. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. I've turned over a match, but I can't remember where. So, let's see. What number did I get this time? 89. So, moving from the 80s family to, what do I need next? A 90. I don't think we've pulled a 90. So, I think we have. You think we have? <laughs> do you remember? Nope. Mrs. Carnes needs to work on her memory. So nope, I got an 89 and a 40. So that is not a Maybe match. not. Maybe, maybe I thought, not. maybe I remembered wrong. 
So should I go with what I thought? I think I'll just keep working on this one since I know that's a 29 and I've checked, I guess I'll check this row. What did I get? Starts with a seven, it's a 70, not a match, right? Okay, let's see then, let's try this one. Let's try a brand new one. 79, 70s family, and we're gonna cross over. So what number do I need? 80. And I think I remember where this one is now. 80, did I get it? 79, 80. That's right, I have a match, so I get to take those two. Finally. All right, I'll try this one. I'm gonna go for something different. What did I get? It has a six and a nine. 69. And so this, this has a six in it. I'm looking for one that starts with a seven. And I think that's the one I just flipped over, right? Maybe? Was that here? 70. 69, 70. Not too many pairs left, are there? <laughs> I hopefully that will help me. <laughs> okay. Ah. This number has a three and a nine. How do we read it? 39. So if, I'm in the, if I have 39, then I'm looking for a 40, and I know we've turned over a 40. Was it at the bottom? No. <laughs> wait. 39 and oh, 80. Oh, no, wait. That's on the wrong side. That's on the wrong side. Oh, it's, that's bad. Then maybe it's this one. Maybe you should look at that. No. Nope. No? Nope. see. <laughs> I know, we're just gonna look at all of them. Okay. We're not doing very good with this game. Huh? We're not. Now it's now I think it's now I think it's right. Now she's be, looked at all the cards, so I think I'm at a disadvantage. Be careful when you set up this game, kiddos. All right, I'm going back to my 29. I'm gonna find that 30. And I'm gonna look up here. Ah! I got it. All right. She is good. Okay. Thirty-nine again. So I'm looking for a number that starts with a four, and it is forty, right? Oh goodness gracious! I got a match. <laughs> Thirty-nine, forty, and I keep these. All right. Well, then hopefully this should work out for me, right? <laughs> Eighty-nine, an eight, and a nine. And so, what am I looking for? This should be a ninety, right? And it is. All right. So now you just see how many cards you have. Whoever has the most cards is the winner. We can already tell she has more. It's taking her longer to count them. I have 12. I have six. I guess so. I was pretty lucky on this game, huh? But, well. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that means. Miss Carnes needs to work her brain, her memory muscles a little bit. So Mrs. Openchain had twice as many as I do, right? I had six and she had 12. So she won very handily. This game is fun. It's good practice and you can play it backwards too. So you can also start with the the decapole or the decade number and work backward mm -hmm. to the number before, which is another good way to practice. And you would just set your deck up the same way with the numbers ending on nine on this side and the numbers ending in zero on this side. And then you would flip from this side first. So if I flipped over 90, I'd have to think about, hmm, I'm going back into the family before that. And if this family all starts with nines, then that family is gonna be eight. And at the end of the, every family, the number ends with a nine. That's the pattern Miss Carnes was pointing out. So it would be 89, right, that I would be looking for. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit more challenging. So if you know how to do these crossing going forward, playing backwards is really a nice way. Terrific. Well, guys, we thank you for being here with us again today with At Home at APS. Um, today we worked on putting some numbers together in combinations, right? We're still working on making five, making ten especially. We're going to keep doing that. We thought about different ways to put coin combinations together in our coin jar. We read all about the king's many, many commissioners and lots of ways to count those up in different combinations. Um, and then we played crossing the decade concentration. Um, 
So remember to visit our resources so you can watch some of these lessons again if you want and so that you can play some of our games. Have Thank you day. for joining us today. Bye-bye.